Lives of Our Saints. On the 4th of December, our church celebrates the Feast of St. John of Damascus. The following are some thoughts on his life and works. John was born in the year 675, in the city with which he is identified with, at a time when Syria was under the rule of the Caliphs, for whom the best that can be said is that they tolerated Christianity and allowed complete freedom of religion. As a matter of fact, John's father was not only a man of some consequence in Damascus, but also a good friend of the Caliph, as a result of which John was given every advantage. This meant that he received the full education denied to families of lesser station and knew nothing of the deprivation which can draw men closer to God. Conversely, John led a life of ease and luxury that can lead to the smug contentment that often draws men away from the house of God and puts them into the arenas of pleasure, as far from God as dens of iniquity. Such was not the case with John, who grew more devout as time went on, in spite of the fact that he could have been lured from the church by the requirements placed on him after he became Prime Minister of the Damascus Court. His diplomatic record was one of excellence, but his greatest service was to Jesus Christ, a service which he fulfilled by writing many books on the Christian religion with the authority of the most knowledgeable theologian. He expanded on dissertation on the use of icons in such an impressive manner that it was used as a guideline by laymen and clergymen alike. There were those who envied John and who sought to discredit him, seizing an opportunity to do so when, in a prolonged absence which saw John away from Constantinople for a longer period than usual, they planted the seed of suspicion in the mind of the Caliph by spreading rumours that John was plotting to send the imperial armies against Damascus in order to seize power himself. With each passing day, John's absence lent credence to the suspicions, and by the time he returned, the caliph had convinced himself of John's alleged treachery and angrily summoned him to his court. Matters by then had gotten completely out of hand, and the distraught John was seized. At the bidding of the caliph, the right hand of this innocent man of God was hacked off by scimitar. It was the enraged caliph's way of being assured that John's writing talent would be blunted, but he drew back in fear when he saw John pick up his severed hand and attach it again to his wrist, miraculously restored through healing which the Lord had seen fit to perform for his wounded servant. The caliph thereafter begged for John's forgiveness and urged him to resume his duties vowing never again to believe the wretched lies brought to his ears by those whom he swore now he would punish. John had no wish for retribution and forgave the caliph, but he said he could no longer serve any other but the Lord, whom he could never repay for the miracle of the restoration of his hand. It was then that John turned his life completely over to the Saviour and left Damascus to fulfil his destiny. Ever mindful of the Lord's help, John went to Palestine and entered the monastery of St. Savas, where he joined in ascetic prayer and meditation. Several months later, he was encouraged by the abbot to give full expression to his creative gifts, and the right hand that had been severed was used to write down the beautiful hymns that came from the depth of John's love for Jesus Christ. The result was some of the most beautiful hymns ever created, words and music both, which are sung to this day not only in the Eastern Church, but in the Roman Catholic Church as well. Masterpieces of words and song continued to pour forth from John until he died peacefully on the 4th of December in the year 745.